Get your popsicles! Popsicles! Hello! Welcome to GMAT Tuesdays. Today, I'm eating a popsicle. Because we're going to talk about Peter Piper's Popsicle Pantry. And the reason that we're talking about that is because we want to learn about what matters in the real world. Another edition of our real world matters. Um, so remember, the information that we cover in these videos aren't uh, actual concepts that you're being tested on in the GMAT. These are just things you should know about to feel more comfortable when you're reading the long passages or reading a critical reasoning uh, question. So these are definitely concepts that can come up. Um, the more that you know about them, the easier it will be to deal with the actual question that they're asking you on the test. So, this is a line, it's really tart. Um, we're going to learn what all these words mean, uh, that's why they're listed here. So, to better understand what these words mean, we're going to talk about a fictitious uh, popsicle company that I want to start. I want to sell these popsicles in the park on sunny days. Um, and so the three major ideas that we need to know when starting a business are revenue, cost, and profit. The revenue is all of the money that I am going to take in selling my popsicle. So when I offer you a popsicle and charge you money for it, that money I take in is considered revenue. So most of the time with a business, your sales are your revenue. Um, companies can also make revenue or have revenue come in through investments that they've made, but most of the time it's through sales. Costs are everything that I have to pay as a person starting a business to make it run. So to buy the juice to make my popsicles, to the refrigerator where I'm going to put them in the refrigerator to freeze them, I got to pay for that, the electricity, um, I got to pay for these wooden popsicle sticks. Um, so all of that is going to be a cost. Companies have to pay their employees, they have to pay health insurance, they have to pay taxes, they have to pay rent on the place where they have their business. So there's lots of costs that go into running a business. And then finally, the profit is the difference between those two. As you can see here, a very complicated math equation, your profit is equal to revenue minus cost. So ideally, you want to turn a profit, which is a idiomatic phrase to mean that you're going to end up with a positive value here. If you don't end up with a positive value, that's when you end up operating at a loss. So this means that you are spending more money than you're bringing into your company. Um, so you're not actually making any money. It's costing you more money to have the company open than it does to, or it just costs you more money than you're taking in. Um, when companies start out, they will take strategic losses to um, invest in the future. So for example, if I'm starting my popsicle company, I'm going to have to invest a lot of money at the beginning, and I'm not going to have any revenue because I don't have popsicles to sell. So I'm going to take a strategic loss at the beginning and spend a lot of money on popsicle sticks. Mm. It's delicious. Juice, refrigeration space. Maybe I need like a little cart that I can push around to have my popsicles in when I'm at the park. Um, but I'm doing this because I know that in the future, I'm going to sell my delicious popsicles and people would love them. So um, that is a strategic loss that I'm taking. So those are kind of the basics. Now let's talk a little bit about the difference between gross and per item. And this is actually something that's really good to know about because in the integrated reasoning questions or critical reasoning, um, maybe even in the quantitative section, you might get questions about gross costs or per item costs, and it's really important to know the difference between the two. So gross means disgusting, but not when it comes to economics. Gross means the total. Instead of saying total cost, they say gross cost. So it's all of the money without taking any of any taxes out or any of the cost out. So let's say, for example, my first run of popsicles, I want to make 50 popsicles, and the gross cost for making those popsicles is $20. Very cheap. I'm actually renting space in my parents' uh, refrigerator, so that's really cheap, and I don't have to pay for that. 
Um, so I really just have to buy the wooden sticks and the popsicle juice and sugar. Um, the gross revenue that I could get from my popsicles, let's say, is $100. Um, so that's the total revenue I take in from selling uh, 50 popsicles. I'm going to sell them for $2. And so my gross profit then is the difference between these two, which is $80. The per item cost is different. It's going to be, as you can see, a fraction. So we want to calculate per, not the total cost, but per item, how much does it cost to make a popsicle? And so they're actually pretty reasonable to, oh, it's melting on me. Uh, they're actually pretty reasonable to make. They only cost 40 cents to make, not too bad. And the, like I said, I'm going to sell them for $2. So uh, the total revenue would be $100. But you can see that divide 100 by 50 and I get $2, so $2 a popsicle. And that means my profit per item is going to be $1.60. So now I realize that I don't need this money. These popsicles should do some charitable work. I shouldn't take in all this money and benefit from these delicious popsicles. I want to share the wealth. And so I decide I'm not going to be a for-profit corporation where I'm really concerned about profit. I'm going to become a non-profit. So what a non-profit is and how it's different is that the company is focused more on some sort of charitable work than it is on turning a profit. So there's lots of different types of nonprofits out there, schools, churches, um, volunteer organizations, um, museums, uh, music halls. You can have any type of nonprofit in, out there. Um, and in that case, the profits don't actually go to people who own the company. You actually don't even own the company. It's held by a group of people and the profits just get reinvested into the company and the stated goal of a nonprofit is to do some sort of charitable work that will benefit society. So what I've decided is that I'm going to make these popsicles, sell them, and give all of my profits to my favorite charity. So that's all you need to know about what matters in the real world. Or actually, there's a lot more else out there to know, but this is a good start. So. Know that this is just the very beginning, it's a very basic introduction to these ideas, um, but the more you can go out and read about these concepts, the better you'll do when it comes to testing. Alright, be excellent to the universe, and I'll see you soon.